Alrighty, so we are going to be making some artistic changes today to the Mark Brown's Game Maker Toolkit Basic Flappy Bird Tutorial. Um, so if anybody's watching this video and they don't know what I'm talking about, um, they can just go to this tutorial here from Game Maker's Toolkit. I'll put a, a link in the, in, the, in the description below. But for those of us who are part of the Tech Hub program this tutorial is being made for, let's start by just seeing where we're at right now. So we have a Flappy Bird game, we've got pipes, there's a score counter, and it's all pretty nice and easy breezy cheesy. So let's see what we can do to make it a little fancier. So there are a couple of assets that are included with the original project, but let's see what we can do to make our own. So let's open up Photoshop and create a new bird body sprite. Um, we're going to make a new image. And the original sprite for the bird body was 446 by 520. Um, so that's good. We can just start with that. And I'm just going to draw something cute and simple. I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, but you can use your mouse as well. Not a problem there. I'm going to make my guy yellow because we're really a nice little duck color. I'll make him a duck because why not? Really super simple stuff. Make him a duck. Nice duck. Not, not my finest artwork, but uh, the, the heart, my heart is in it, I promise. And let's make it so that the duck kind of reaches to the edges almost of our canvas so that everything is fitting nicely. I'll give our duck some nice eyes. There we go. Beautiful duck. Perfect. I love it. Okay. So let's save this, save as, and I'm just going to go to the directory of wherever you put your project. It might be named something different. I'm going to go into assets. I'm actually going to make a new folder for textures. I don't like having everything in the main directory, so I'll put it there, save it as a PNG, and I'll call it new bird. Okay, so now we have, and when it loads in, we have a new textures file right here. It's got new bird. So we need to tell it to be a sprite. I had already figured that out. That's nice. Sometimes it comes in as the default. You have to make it into a sprite. So that's good. Um, and all you do is go to your bird asset, and sprite, renderer, bird body. Boop. Now <laughs> you have a duck. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> okay. So let's, let's see what happens if we can make this a little bit more, um, I don't know, interesting. Let's create our first animation. So let's head back to Photoshop. So we have our beautiful duck. Um, let's create a duplicate of that layer. So now we have duck two. And let's have it be like so, we've got a nice, beautiful wing. Let's create a frame where the wing is up instead of down. There we go. The wing is up instead of down. Doot. And we can even get a little fancy with the feet. Bring him up a little. He's really working. He's working on his flying. All right, and then file save as once again PNG new bird brings up. Okay, so now we have another one, which is new bird wings up. So for example, if I were to change the sprite here to new bird wings up, it would look like that but that's not what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create an animator that will make these things fancy. So let's add an animator component to our duck or bird or whatever you decide to create. Um, and we're gonna create another folder 
for animations. Because I'm fancy like that. And then in there, create an animator controller. So this is the logic controller. Bird animation controller. So now we have this cool animator here. Um, and if you can't find it, we have window, animation, animator, and animation. So that's, these are the two windows you'll need. Um, let's get right into it. Select bird. And to begin animating bird, create an animation clip. So let's make bird board, bird idle. All right, you can see it gets created there, and it's also created an animator. So that's because we had the bird selected when we created the uh, new animation. So all we're going to do for this one is um, take our bird and do nothing to it. So we're going to have it be wings up, and that is all. It's just going to do that forever. I'll just make it a longer animation because it makes me feel better. So that's that's all it's doing. It's just chilling like that. That's bird idle. Let's do a new animation by clicking on this little thing here. Create new clip. Bird flap. And we're going to record again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have the bird wings up and very quickly flap them down. Oop. And then we're just going to have this repeat a couple times. I'm just control C, control Ving these keyframes here. So let's do that. <laughs> um, and so now the bird, when it flaps, it will do that. So what we're going to do now is add some transitions so we can make it do this through code. So we'll add one transition there and one transition back. And the back is fine. Um, I'm just going to make the transition time from being like a split second to zero. That way it'll just be um, instantaneous instead of it like kind of moving between two, transitioning slowly. And same with the way there, I'm going to have it be instantaneous. So that's okay, but far on the way there, we don't want it to, this has exit time means it'll automatically go back at the end of its animation. We don't want that on the way here, so let's turn that off. And then it says, okay, well you need a condition here. So let's make a new trigger called flap um, and then add that flap 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 and I added that by pressing this little plus button and doing trigger so then let's go into code and we're gonna add two things so the first one is a public animator uh, animator bird anim controller and can't spell today and then basically, when we hit the space bar, it will flap, and it'll also tell the bird atom controller to set trigger flap. Easy. Boom. So now it will do, it will set the trigger, it will send it here because of the condition to, from idle to flap, and then when that is done, it'll go back to um, idle. So let's see how that looks in practice. So we got that. Oh, ah, so you might see that it's not working because I did not attach the variable bird atom control. Uh, I did not assign it. So we go to our bird and lo and behold, yes, I did not put the animator where it's looking for it. So it's calling nothing when I press the space bar. So let's go and let's put the animator component into the animator component. Save it up. Let's try it again. There we go. And as you can see, it is transitioning beautifully. Wonderful. Now our bird flaps. He flaps. Okay. Let's make, do one last thing to make this a little more interesting. Um, let us go and go back into our bird flap animation and let's actually squash and stretch this bird because everything's better with a little squash and stretch so at the beginning make sure you're recording by the way sorry i should have made that more clear you have to record changes here 
So make sure you record at the scale of 111 and then around 0.5 in, make it a little bit squashed. And I use the R hotkey to go to scale and then back to one again. So that'll look like this. Okay, so let's see how this looks. I think it needs to be a little bit more pronounced. I'm not noticing any, any squash or stretch. And that is unacceptable. Flap. Maybe it needs more time. Maybe it just needs to be more squashed. Remember you're recording. Wah. Really smush that bird. You know what it is? It's the, I suspect it looks good, but I suspect it's also being messed with because of the transition time being at the end. So you want to set the transition offset to, um, the beginning there. So that way it'll happen right away at the beginning and there's no skipping of it whatsoever. So let's try this. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. So you totally see that it's a lot less choppy because it's happening right with the button press. Perfect. Yeah. And so that's all we're going to do today is we have our little animation and tomorrow we will um, see what we can do in Blender to add some cool assets to the game. All right. Thank you.